Okay, what's going on everybody? My name is Mang. Welcome back to Mang Plays the Best Games of All Time. We're firmly in the year 2000. And we're going to be playing a game that was uh, set in the year 2023. Very interestingly. So it all works out. I did skip one game, though, which I'll talk about, and that is Legend of Zelda Majora's Mask. Now, I strongly dislike Majora's Mask. Uh, let it be known. I really... I don't think it's a good game. I don't think it's a good video game, to be perfectly honest. Uh, and the more years that go by, I think it just looks, uh, it just comes off as worse and worse. I didn't care for it when it came out in the year 2000, and I don't care for it now. So, um, I really had no interest in, in looking at it. Um... I, I, yeah, I mean, I, uh, I don't think it's one of the best games of all time, but, uh, there are plenty that do, and so much like, you know, sensible world of soccer or something, I kind of just have to, uh, dust, you know, just, um, just say fuck it. Yeah, I, I, I can't, I don't, yeah, I don't even want to talk about it, really. So, uh, fine. It exists. It's on the list. Okay. I, I mean, in general, I don't like most 3D Zeldas until they hit Breath of the Wild. So, I'm really not a good person to even judge it. I, I just think the whole... Like... Pretty much every 3D Zelda until Breath of the Wild, I felt was just kind of tedious and archaic and yeah, not for me, not for me. Uh, but obviously it has its fans. It's it's a very successful franchise. So I will just say I have no vote on Majora's Mask, but I'm, I'm glad if some people enjoy it. Anyways, we're going to be talking about Perfect Dark. So Perfect Dark was a uh, the follow-up in some ways to GoldenEye, both developed by Rare. And with Perfect Dark, they took a bunch of things, I think, that they learned from GoldenEye and where they could theoretically improve upon. And rather than adhering to a, an existing license, they went their own way and developed their own setting and characters and blah, blah, blah. So we have a futuristic setting, you know, somewhat futuristic setting, 2023. And it uh, follows the character Joanna Dark, which is a nice play on Joan of Arc which in French is pronounced Jean d'Arc. So, you know, there you have it. I don't know why they did that. Uh, is she French in the game? I don't know. Nowhere in here does it say f French, but she's French, so I don't know. I don't know why they did that, but whatever. Anyways, uh, so Perfect Dark is a game that I generally think is better than GoldenEye. Uh, and back in the day, I spent far, far, far more time playing Perfect Dark multiplayer than I did GoldenEye multiplayer. So Perfect Dark is kind of a game nearer and dearer to my heart. That being said, 
I think some people really like the single player of this game. Some people really don't care for the single player of this game. Uh, as far as like the storyline is concerned and the levels and blah, blah, blah. I will say, I don't know if I ever actually finished the single player. Despite playing a lot of Perfect Dark. Most of my time with this was spent in the multiplayer. Uh, there was usually like three of us. Uh, and then we would throw in maybe some bots if we were interested in such things. And uh, yeah, it was just a lot of fun. I had some very interesting weapons like the laptop gun and the far sight. We're going to be looking at both of those. So there was a remaster of this uh, on the Xbox 360 uh, 13 years ago. And I guess that's also included in Rare Replay. I don't own an Xbox, so I don't know if this is available on, like, the Microsoft Store. I'm not sure. I didn't really look into that. So we are emulating the original N64 version, um, which, of course, looks pretty shitty and has pretty terrible frame rate. You know, it is what it is. Uh, so rather than looking at the single player, which I think is what we did for GoldenEye, we're going to follow up our recent trend of first-person shooters, and we're going to just do a, a match with bots. Okay? So in here, you can see scenario we have combat or king of the hill. Those are our two scenarios. I don't... Uh, I, maybe you can unlock more if you progress or something. You know, there is like a... I'm not sure exactly. I could probably find a code to unlock everything. But anyways, this is what you get when you just first fire up Perfect Dark. So we're going to do combat because that's free for all. There's fast movement. You can turn off radar, auto aim. We do not want to turn off auto aim. Uh, we don't want to turn off anything. Uh, arena. I don't remember which one we I really liked. Maybe it was Pipes. Probably not. Maybe it was Area 50. Let's try Area 52. All right, so for weapons, uh, they have some preset lists, like all the pistols, uh, all the automatic weapon, or a bunch of them, some power weapons. Um, throw the rocket launcher in there. Just timed mines and knives. Uh, you can just get random five weapons. Uh, or you can set a custom list. And my concern is that we don't have the far sight unlocked, and that's going to be essential. So I feel like we may have to put in a code. Now, I wonder... I wonder if there's, like, an in-game code. Okay. Yeah. So you have to complete a bunch of challenges in order to unlock new maps and new weapons, which is kind of lame. Um, but I'm certain there's uh, a code. So just give me a second. Okay. Well, I spent um, more time than I really want to. And um, there's no codes or anything that unlock everything, which is weird. As far as I saw. Um, so then I thought, okay, I'll just find a save file that has everything unlocked. And those exist, but I literally could not get it to work with RetroArch. Even though plenty of people have done so. I don't know where I went wrong, but it just... N nothing I tried work. Different ROM file. N nothing. Just nothing. So fuck it. I mean, it's a bummer. But... Uh, I mean, they're rebooting, remaking Perfect Dark at some point. It's being worked on, so eventually I'll experience the far side again. But anyways, uh, right, so let's just do Area 52 for weapons. Let's just do random... Uh, I don't want the knife. I don't want nothing. I don't want double knives. 
Sure, we'll go with that. Okay. It's a selection. Um, score of 10 seems pretty low. Let's go 20. We're not going to go all the way to 50. That's for sure. Uh, then instead of bots, they're called simulants. So you've got Meet Sim. This is the easiest of all the simulants. Then there's easy, normal, and then you get special ones. Peace don't actually attack you. Shields obviously have shields. Rocket, you can guess. Kazi Sim. I think that's Kamikaze. This simulant will stop at nothing. To destroy its target. Fist Sim uses fist. Prey Sim. This simulant prefers to prey on the weak in order to get easier kill. Coward Sim. Judge Sim. Feud Sim. Speed Sim. Turtle Sim. Venge Sim. Speed Sims are pretty insane. I remember that. Uh, we just want normal sims. We're not going to get fancy here. Uh, we don't need any teams. And uh, we'll play... Here's your character selection. You got Joanna Combat. Daniel Carrington. Cassandra DeVries. CI Male Lab Technician. He's my favorite character. CI Female Lab Technician. CI Soldier, Datadyne Shock Trooper, Datadyne Security, Datadyne Infantry, Datadyne Trooper, Secretary. Okay, so we'll play as a secretary, and then you can change their head if you want a man body. Yeah, there you go. We'll play as that. Okay. Uh, blah, 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 you know, it's all fine. Or just start the game. <sighs> so, yes, I mean, let it be known that there are better ways to experience perfect art. I just don't really have access to them. All right, we got the Falcon 2 standard pistol laser sight. This is definitely the map that we play the most on. Uh, there's these winding tunnels, and then there's this big open area. This is where all the laptop guns are always placed. You went in here, you just got obliterated. Oh, shit! He knocked the fucking gun out of my hand. And he drugged me. For some reason, I don't remember that. Blast him. Gotta kill. Oh, shit. Shit, I'm gonna die. I got the CMP. Love this gun. Choose right through that ammo. There you go. Oh, get the, uh, there you go. Okay. Oh, 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 double CMP kills fucking everything. Unless he numb fucking judo chops you. Fuck! Fuck! Dodge them bullets. It dazes you. It's really annoying. Got him. CMP, man. We can fucking win this with this shit. Normal sim. You definitely unlock harder bots. I, I can say that almost as a fact. I remember much harder bots. Like, insane bot. Um, so, all right. I mean, real talk. Real talk. And I think uh, it's really clear. If you look at the last three... The last three first-person shooters we've looked at. Quake 3 Arena. Fuck. Quake 3 Arena, Unreal Tournament, Counter-Strike. 
And now we're on perfect dark. Which of these is not like the other? Fuck! I'm getting shredded. So I don't remember the maps enough. respawned me like right where I died how come their judo chops are fucking insane and mine suck dick fuck why was I chasing them um really outside of my my point is outside of nostalgia why would anyone play Perfect Dark in the year 2023? I mean, really. Like, what, what, what does this game have to offer? Outside of nostalgia. And this is nostalgic for me, I will say that, but... Exactly. <laughs> Even with it being nostalgic, I can tell you it's like, it's still not a pleasant experience. If I got, you know, three buddies together and we wanted to play just four player, old school, first person shooter goodness, am I going to pick this or am I going to pick Quake Live? Hmm, I wonder. How about the one where you can actually, like, turn your camera how you want to turn it and aim? There's really, I mean, it, it's, there's just really no comparison. It's, um, and again, I know perhaps if I played the reboot. Or not the reboot, the remaster. That would be more of a fair comparison. But really, this is like playing some janky ass, like, indie game <laughs> made by a 13 year old nowadays for like five dollars compared to quake live as far as a an arcadey first person shooter is concerned fuck me falcon 2 is not very good on its own and i'm not just saying all this because I'm dying a bunch. Whereas Unreal Tournament, I went 50 and 9. Now, perhaps... Perhaps you may like to play Perfect Dark for the single player. There we go. Fuck me. Uh, I mean, that's a certainly a, a, a valid thought. And perhaps you enjoy playing the single player. I would argue, again, it's due to nostalgia, but, you know. But, returning to the original question. What does Perfect Dark do better than any other first-person shooter available in 2023? And... If anyone wants to make a, a good argument for an answer to that question, I am all ears. Um... 
the, again, it's not based on nostalgia. It's just, to me, I, I think it's kind of a frustrating thing to play compared to the other first-person shooters we've looked at that came out uh, around this same time. Now, if I could play this with modern controls and uh, let's say modern graphics and modern frame rate and everything, that would help a lot, absolutely. But I don't, again, I don't know what it would do really that special. I saw a comment from somebody in a discussion that said it's not really a first person shooter. It's a rare shooter, which is like its own subgenre. And I guess if that's a subgenre, the rare shooter, then uh, I guess it is the cream of the crop of rare shooters. Finally, a real fucking gun. Fuck. No, Judo Charm, no! Yeah, no, hold on. Just take a breather. Sort your shit out. God, somebody launched the nuke. Oh, did I actually lose? Oh, the time ran out. Oh, that's what it was. Okay, I had 11 deaths. I had the most deaths of anyone, but I had the highest score, so I still won. It counts. Yeah, so... I can't... I don't... What, hmm. what game was I talking about where I said this? But it's just like, at the time, this was the best we had. You know? And like I said, I mean, we played the shit out of Perfect Dark when I was young. But that's because getting... Having four people, or three people... I, mean, I think we had three people most of the time. Having three people around, you know, one screen. And you just have one N64, one copy of the game. You got three controllers, and you can just have first-person shooter fun... You know, for hours. We didn't have anything better than that. And that was really good. Had we had three computers all set up in like a dedicated LAN center, you know, and we had Unreal Tournament or Quake 3 Arena at the time. Yeah, that probably would have been better even in, you know, in the year 2000. But we didn't. And, and for most people, that's how it was. I, I can't really imagine like a good faith argument for GoldenEye being objectively a better multiplayer first person shooter compared to, um, you know, Quake 2 or Quake 3 or Unreal Tournament or, um, or Counter Strike or Doom multiplayer even. Just, just think about the fucking N64 controller. Just picture it in your mind. How could that be better than a mouse and keyboard for a first-person shooter? It's mind-boggling. But it's just like, you know, consoles were big things. PC gaming was not really, like, at the forefront. Even in our household, we had a PC. We probably had two PCs. But we still mostly played console gaming at this point. And we certainly were not alone. These were big games. Now it just seems kind of laughable when you look at the whole... the spectrum 
and and all the the, the releases of first person shooters across all platforms it's like holy shit i mean there's really no comparison in my mind between pc first person shooters and console first person shooters now there are absolutely some amazing console games best games of all time easily that weren't available on pc like it's not like consoles are shit pc master race all the way but for first person shooters i mean come on come on now come on so yeah i mean i'm gonna i'm gonna have to say i don't believe perfect dark is one of the best games of all time it's possible I've said earlier, maybe when I was talking about Goldeneye, but even when I was talking about Goldeneye, I think maybe I said I don't think Perfect Dark would be either. Just because it's such a product of its time. Especially, 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 if you're talking about the original N64 version, no one is going to recommend anyone play the N64 version of Perfect Dark 20 years from now. I mean, not nobody, there will be somebody, but I mean, 20 years from now, go on Reddit, if it exists, go to r slash gaming or whatever, and type in, recommend me a first person shooter to play. Perfect Dark will most likely not get mentioned once. And if it does, it'll probably be some sort of remaster or reboot or something. I, I just cannot fathom an instance. I don't think even Goldeneye will be mentioned, and that's certainly more known in the public conscience. It's just, no, it's a product of its time. It was what we had. It was fun back in the day, but this thing does not stand any sort of test of time. And again, I welcome all good faith arguments that aren't based on nostalgia for why Perfect Dark is one of the, let's not even say, let's not even say best game of all time. One of the best games of all time. Tell me why Perfect Dark is one of the best first-person shooters of all time. Yeah, I mean, I'm all ears. The music's good. I, I'll give you that. Any argument you have based on the music being good, I agree with you. I do think the music is pretty kick-ass. But music alone does not a good game make. I don't know. I mean, maybe I'm coming off as kind of bitter and angry. I don't, I, I mean, it's, it's good. It's just, I think it's kind of one of those just lip service picks, you know? I can't, I just, I, I can't imagine Perfect Dark being heavily recommended um, in any sort of gaming circles. Let's see. Let's see. Here's a discussion. This is from 2020. Is it worth playing the OG Perfect Dark in 2020? This person said, a definitive FPS that truly has passed the test of time and will never feel dated to those who grew up with it. Now, hold on. Keep in mind, this is the Perfect Dark subreddit. <laughs> Let that be known. Uh, Perfect Dark is an amazing game. It was really ahead of its time. As for playing Perfect Dark in 2020, the Xbox Live Arcade release on Rare Replay is a great version to play that runs at perfect 1080p 60fps. As others pointed out, there's also an N64 emulator designed to play Perfect Dark at 60fps with mouse and keyboard controls, which works really well but is somewhat glitchy and inaccurate to the original game. The Xbox Live Arcade version is superior in every way in my opinion, even adding online play. gameplay really holds up, but if you're not used to golden eye controls, it will be rough. I recommend the 360 version if you can play it. Alright. 
So obviously, uh, there's probably a fair bit of bias here in the Perfect Dark subreddit. But, I mean, every single game on this list, even Populous, is going to have its fanatic fans. And I, like I said, any game in existence, someone will probably be able to argue, well, someone will argue that it's one of the best games of all time. Here's uh, just a post about Perfect Dark on the gaming subreddit. Perfect Dark walked so every modern console shooter could run. Limb damage, dynamic lighting, cool HUD menu, logins with stats, multiplayer bots, retro multiplayer maps. What does that mean? Amazing levels of multiplayer customization, secondary functions on weapons. This is what passed the torch to Halo. I mean, uh, I don't know, man. It's obviously, yeah, people like it. Plenty of people saying it's the best game on N64. What about a fresh take? What about someone that's, that's talking not based on nostalgia? That's all I want. That's all I want. I thought I saw some sort of discussion about it. Uh, in, in, from people that had not play it, played it. Alright, so here's a, uh, from Patient Gamer subreddit. Finally played Perfect Dark. This is from a few years ago. Uh, starting off with the negative, this game definitely shows its age graphically. I'm playing with the updated Xbox visuals. So again, this is the version that other people were raving about. 1080p, 60fps, modern controls. Uh, I'm playing with, the, uh, definitely still had its moments where I couldn't even tell what I was looking at. It made objectives challenging at times because, true to its age, there was next to no hand-holding. Looking for little things like a button to unlock a door could sometimes be next to impossible. There were no subtitles, super quiet dialogue, blah blah blah. That being said, holy hell, the gameplay mechanics were ahead of their time. The aiming was terrible, and I was saved by auto-aim most of the time. Great, that's what I want. Uh, uh, even the intricacy of the level design was impressive. It was designed to be maze-like akin to classic FPS like Doom, but it was also functional to a real-world standard most of the time. Okay. Even had a nice aesthetic despite the graphics limitations. I'd love to see this game redone with overhauled audio and visual assets to increase the likelihood of getting a sequel. <sighs> If a game needs to be redone to be palatable to a modern audience, does that still count as being one of the best games of all time? I don't know, man. That seems like a fuzzy argument. Because then it becomes like, um, I don't know, it becomes like, The, sh the 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 best game of Theseus, you know, where it's just like, okay, let's just keep uh, rebuilding this best game of all time, and it will continue to be the best game of all time for years and years because we keep remaking it. 
rather than you know the game as it w released being the best of all time i don't know i mean people still hail uh link to the past i mean link to the past is almost certainly legitimately one of the best games of all time that has never been remade they have never remade link to the past and yet it's still played every day around the world randomized you know all sorts of stuff people love link to the past as it is i think that's kind of a, a testament to being one of the best games of all time i don't know i just i feel like this has been way too long of a video but i i just have not seen many good arguments but again as always i don't make the list it's on the list i don't dictate what people feel obviously plenty of people think it's one of the best games of all time <sighs> yeah i mean and and all these comments there's a lot of past tense going on uh the multiplayer was even better it had co-op counter co-op you know uh i lost countless hours of my childhood mowing down meat sims I mean, clearly this person played it for the first time and enjoyed it, apparently, but they did play a more modern version of it. They did have negatives to say about it. Um, and they did say that they want to see it redone and updated to modern standards. So, eh, I don't know. I don't know. Hit me with your comments. Let me know your thoughts on Perfect Dark. I don't usually tend to discuss games this much, but I think this is one that, that if you asked me in like the mid 2000s, is Perfect Dark one of the best games of all time? I would have said absolutely, fucking lutely you know, based on just how much time I had put into it. And as far as like a first person shooter experience goes back then, it was cream of the crop. But now I just don't see it. I just don't see it. And again, that's coming off of playing Counter-Strike Unreal Tournament Quake 3 Arena real recently. That all were just a lot more fun to control and play. So I don't know. Anyways, that's enough. That's enough arguing. My name is Mang. This has been Mang Plays the Best Games of All Time with Perfect Dark. I'll see you fine folks around.